All right, so welcome to a new one on this channel. And in this one, we are going to be talking about the Brainworks Digital V3. Now, all right, so this is a, a what, 10 year old plugin. No one talks about it, about it, about this. Uh, it's just another Brainworks plugin, but this is one of my favorite plugins to mix and master and to audition things more clearly or even as a, use it as a learning tool. Now, maybe no one will watch this video because again, maybe no one cares about this plugin, but I will do it anyways. Uh, you know, this is how much I love this plugin and Plugin Alliance is not pay, is not paying me, Brainworks is not giving me anything for free. I pay for pretty much everything. Okay, so let's start talking about this plugin. Now, this plugin has three different sites. You have your center part, which is like the main command center, let's say, and then you have your EQ section and then everything that else that you're doing right here at the bottom. Now, first, we're going to focus on the master, you know, the center part, because it's really important. This will impact whatever you do on the other controls. Okay, so let's do some playing. So right here you get the gain in. Pretty simple. You get it, you can go up on the gain in. You're gonna be boosting that side, or you can go to your gain out. So this is the pre and this is post. Right? And this is something very common that you get with almost all of the Brainworks plugins. Now right here you get your stereo. You can just make it full mono, or you just can expand it up to 400 percent So you can just make it really wide. And this is another very common, you know, useful uh, Brainworks, uh, you know, button or knob, let's say. Now, then you get your balance from the left and the right. You just can get the left and you can just, just get the right. Now, at the bottom, you get your balance and your correlation just to check everything that you're doing. So, so far, you know, not so crazy, uh, you know, crazy controls. Then you get your pan M and your pan S. So this is one of the things that this, you know, thing, this plugging does really good is going to be working with your mid and your side. So if I play it back, this is going to be my mid. I can just, you know, pan my mid and my side, which is, you know, something wild. If I stay on the side and just move the sides to this and the other one to the other one. Now, this is just a nice feature. So you can make tiny adjustments. Maybe if the mono is just, you know, you want to offset a little bit, or maybe the sides, there's something, you know, more on the left and the right, then you just can make tiny adjustments. And this is something that you need to just use with care and not go really crazy. Right? But you know, you get the option, you know, the ability to just do it. Now, notice at the top right here, you get the mono section and you get a stereo section and you can, when you play it, you can solo the mono section or you can solo the stereo section. So you can hear what is going on on the mid and the side. Now the side information, as maybe you are noticing because maybe you're using headphones or a good speaker. Now, uh, the, the side information comes out as mono, right? And this is something very particular because sometimes when you uh, audition the side, you know, the side information, it's going to be, you know, full stereo. But right here, you get, you know, very in the center. So you can really audition what is going on on the sides. And this is, for me, something super important because I use this to, you know, make corrections, to listen what's going on and then, you know, make adjustments. So it, it's giving me an easy way of listening to what's going on on the sides. Same thing on the mono. I can really hear, clearly hear what's going on on the mono and then make, make a call, make adjustments, right? Now still, right here, you have the MS and the LR and the MS Rec. So MS is going to let you work in mid-side. That's why you have a mono section and stereo section. Now, if you go to the other one, not that one, this one, now you're going to be working with left, so you can hear the left section and everything in the center. It's not just, you know, it's not, it's not doing this. And this one, you just can hear the right. Everything is going to be in the center. You know, you can hear both speakers. It is something cool if you want to identify problems and, you know, do things. So the other one is going to be the MS Rec. What the F is the difference, you know, with the MS normal. Now, the MS rack is to work with material that was recorded with a, with a miking technique that calls, you know, MS recording. Now, if you're not working with that file or that, you know, material, maybe you just want to use the good old MS instead of the MS rack. 
but you know, it's nice that you get the option. So another thing that you can do, you can swap the left and the right and vice versa, of course, which is again, another cool feature, nice thing to have on something that you might be using on your master. So this is the main controls that you get now. Of course, you can talk about all of this, but this is super important. Why? Well, you can use it just to master. You can use it to identify problems. You can use it to check if your balance, your correlation is good and everything is, you know, on spot on. Or you can use it as a learning tool. Right now, these days you have more advanced uh, plugins like the, for example, the adapter metrics AB when you get, you know, a lot of visual information. But right here, let's say that you want to listen to your track, make sure that everything is good in mono, everything is good in stereo. You can use it maybe to uh, listen to other tracks, you know, other mixes. You just decode the tracks a little bit better because you can listen to whatever's going on in the stereo on the mid side and you can, you know, you can do all of this. So is a tool for, you know, mastering is a tool to identify problems and it's a tool to study. And I do this with this plugging the whole time. Sometimes I like to bring tracks, you know, from different people and I, the, maybe tracks that I, I find interesting. And I just bring them to the DAW and I go through this plugin and just trying to separate all the different instruments and different parts that they are using, hearing the stereo section, what they are doing on stereo side, on the sides, what they are doing on the mono side, and just, you know, trying to study what other people do. So this is a great tool uh, just to do that. Now you have a couple more controls right here. We're going to talk about them in a minute. But first I want to cover everything that we want to, we, we can do right here. So this is the EQ section. So if you want to EQ mid side, well, this is just going to be the mono and this is going to be the stereo. So you can do it that way. But if you change it to uh, left and right, now you're going to be EQing the left and you're going to be EQing the right. Maybe you're going to be doing something like that. Right. Now we can really hear the difference. So you can do that if you wanted to. Now, right here you have a link. Now, whatever, when you enable the link, whatever it is that you do right here is gonna do it right here. You're just linking both channels. It doesn't matter if you're working on left, right, mid, side, it, it doesn't matter. If I move this, it's gonna do it on the other one as well. Right. Right, so let's break down the EQ section. I'm gonna be bringing a fresh track just to keep it fresh, right? It's okay, so if I'm standing on the mono, I can solo the mono, but also you just can use the high pass and the low pass. Now, whatever you do right here is gonna solo this section. Notice that if I move this knob, it's just soloing the mono. And this is doing it by default and it's gonna be this section. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So you can low pass and high pass. Create a simple and you have different options like the 6 dB per octave and 12 dB per octave so you can just chop the lows. You can still link it right here at the top and you're going to be doing the same thing on the mono and stereo section, you know, the main inside. Right, so you get the same thing for the high pass, you can link it if you wish. And you have a 6 and a 12, or you can just turn it off. Alright, pretty simple controls. Now then you have the other ones, which is going to be five different bands. Okay, so let's play it again. Now, you have your low band going up, which is going to boost that side. And notice that when we are boosting, we are soloing the mono section. This one is going to be your Q, which is going to be by default shoving the Qs, but you can just change it to a bell EQ. And also right here, change the frequency from, you know, just to shape it, or just you can attenuate or just boost. I don't know. You can go really narrow in this one. If you want it to. And also when we move the, uh, you know, the frequency is letting us hear where we are doing it. But maybe I want to boost then I want to go narrow. Right? Super simple. Now you can do all this on the stereo section. Maybe I want to go to boost the highs. Well, you can. By default, it's going to be a bell EQ, but you can just let me start it again. You can go all the way down and you're going to be doing a shelving EQ. Still, you can change the EQ. 
And all of these bands, you just can turn them off if you want to. Same as this one. All right? Now the other one, the other bands are gonna be pretty much the same. On this one, it's gonna be on the 350. You can sweep it around, but it's gonna be a wider. Let me just go stand right here. You can do a wide band or you can do a narrow band. I'm gonna stand right here. And just cut a little bit of that. Now, as you move on, this three, two bands, you know, the, this one and this one, they're gonna be pretty much the same. It's a mid frequency band and a high mid. So maybe you want a little bit of boost, you can do so. And select the different bands. Same right here. Maybe we want a little bit of boost or maybe cut right there. And we are working in the mono section. Everything that we are doing right here, we can do it on the sides. Alright, so pretty simple. Now, one very common thing that you can do, and I, you know, we always do with this one, is that maybe on the mono section, you want to remove maybe a little bit of the highs, but then on the higher frequencies, you can boost a little bit of the high frequencies and just chop, you know, the low information on the sides because, you know, you don't need it. Maybe you want to boost a little bit of lows on the mono, well you can. Maybe a little bit of cut right here on the 300-ish. There you go, you get it. All of the bands can be turned off from here and everything that you do right here you just can link it to the stereo section. And this is really useful when you are working with left and the right. So you don't want to offset it, well then, you know, you can link it right here and do the left and the side. Now on this one, it's gonna be a shelf. I'm gonna be doing something like that. There we go. All right. So this is the EQ. It's a pretty simple EQ, powerful EQ, and it's just gonna give you what you need. Now also, you have a prop, uh, a proportional e, uh, proportional Q. Now this is, means that when you go up in gain, I'm gonna do it from here. The proportional Q is gonna be going narrow as you go up. If I disable this, now it's gonna be a wider band. You can still do something like that. This is again, that's why it's, it's called proportional Q. All right. All right, so very powerful, intuitive, uh, controllable and simple EQ. We had all the options that you get right here in the in the center. Just a you know, just a fantastic. I'm I'm a fan of this plugin. So then you have more, and yeah, you get more. So right here you have all this section. You have a bass shift, you have a presence shift, and a dynamic EQ. And on the other side you get the same thing. So I'm gonna be playing the other tracks so we can keep it fresh. So let me there you go play it from there. So you have a bass shift. Now this one is a different function from this one. In this one you can really go in deep and this one it will give you a pull tech key type of uh, boost on the bass. You can always turn it off from here, as you do you can. And when you turn it off, it will just, the dotted line is where you would be if this, you know, was on. And you can do, get that, you know, pull techy type of sound. You boost and you attenuate right after. Now, on this one, you cannot adjust the Q. You cannot adjust the Q and you cannot adjust the frequency. But you get different flavors to this. You, can do, you get the A, you get the B, and you get the C. Now, this doesn't mean that when you do this, all of this is just disregarded. You just still, you know, can go right here, maybe go right there, adjust your Q and do something like that. It's completely up to you. Right? Maybe you want to cut a little bit more there. All right, so this is a very nice thing that gets you, gets you, gives you that, you know, pull tech type of thing right out of the box. The other, the other one is gonna be the presence shift, and I'm gonna be doing it on this one. So this one is gonna be for the higher frequencies. Gonna boost and attenuate right before. And you, uh, just like the bass shift, you have different flavors. All right. 
the next thing you get right here is a dynamic EQ. Now, nowadays on modern EQs, you get this feature, uh, like the FAF filter, for example, you can uh, have a lot of, uh, you know, different points and bands and you can do it independently. Now on this one, you can just do it on one, you can target one and then uh, you can attenuate or you can boost and it works just like a, you know, like a compressor. Now if I play something and I solo it, Nothing is going to happen because we are not, uh, you know, we are just not doing anything. Now if I keep, go if I go down, it's going to attenuate or it's just going to boost to the other side. Now you need to select the right frequency. So maybe uh, let me boost. I'm going to be going to maybe, maybe there. So if I unsolo, I want you to hear the uh, snare, the snap. If I go the other way, you're just kind of a, you know, ducking it down. So you have a slow, which is going to be a slow type of, you know, detection. If I go too fast, it's going to be a, little, a lot more faster. So again, this is a nice thing. Now it's a little bit outdated because now on other plugins, we can do this uh, a lot more easily. We have a lot more controls and we can do it on pretty much any, any, any band that we want. But, you know, you get it right here. And again, this is like a deep dive. So I need to show you all the controls. So next you have the gain scale. Now, if I'm doing something like that, something like that, and I'm gonna go really aggressive on this just to show you how this works. I'm just doing a lot, right? I'm being really aggressive on purpose. So you can go down on everything that you're doing. Go up or scale it down. So if it, maybe this is a little bit too much and you know what, I want to go down and all, you don't need to go to each of the controls independently and just, you know, lower them down. You just can do something like that and just bring them down. You can turn it off if you wanted to and compare. All right? Now, let me go back to reset and you have the good old mono maker. This is something that we get with the Plugin Alliance. So you can target some frequencies and you just can make them mono. So if I solo this and I go really up, now everything is mono, right? So maybe I want to make mono all the frequencies below 379. So that, that's, you know, that's the point. Right. So at this point, this is something, a classic thing that we get with the, all the Brainworks uh, plugins, right? So that's it. That's pretty much the whole plugin. Now, still, we need to cover the auto solo and the auto listen. And this is just great. Now, uh, it's a little bit confusing. I got to tell you, it's a little confusing, but I got to tell you how it works. So the auto solo is whatever we are doing right here. If I move something on this channel is soloing the mono section, right? That's the auto solo. If I do it on the sides, it's just giving me the sides. Right. If I remove this, I move the uh, gain knob and it's just not doing it. It's not soloing the whole channel. But right. I'm going to keep it on. Now then at the bottom, you have at the bottom, you have the auto listen and you have different profiles. Now you can turn this off completely, but you can select what you want to listen. For example, right now is on the F. The F is going to be this section that you get right here, the frequency. Then you have Q and Q is going to be the Q, this section. And then you have G, which is going to be the gain and is the gain section. So right now it's standing on F, which is going to be the frequency. So when I play something, I'm going to go to stereo because it's a little bit more obvious. I'm going to be moving this. Notice what happens. It's auto soloing at the top because we have the auto solo. But also it's letting me only isolating this band. And this is what this it's doing it's just letting me listen whatever i'm doing right here but it's only doing it when i move the uh, filter uh, i move the frequency and this is because it says right here it only works for frequency right now i'm gonna go all in q you have different combinations q f g or q f or you know again all of these are combinations of the three different things if you go all in maybe i'm gonna go back to reset now it's gonna let me know, let me hear when I do gain, let me hear when I do this, when I do the Q, or let me hear when I do the frequency. If I go and I turn it off, none of this is happening. Right? 
This is the main difference with the auto listen and the auto solo. Now you might have it, you might want it on. It's completely, um, you know, completely up to you. Now, also, you have a different version of this, but you don't get uh, extended controls. Now, the mixed version, which is this one, it doesn't work on mid and the side. You just don't get it. You just work, can work on left and right, which is stereo, uh, but you cannot work on mid side. That, that's the main difference. Uh, you still have pretty much the same controls, the same controls that you get on the other one. So it depends on what you want to do. Maybe you don't want to work on mid and side. You just can use this plugin as a just a you know normal EQ. All right, so that's it. That's you know the whole plugin. At first, when you you know at first glance, when you look at it, it's just a little bit confusing, and some of the controls are just a little bit confusing. Like you know the Q, the auto solo, maybe MS Rec, maybe what what the F is that. It's just a very easy to understand, uh, you know, EQ once once you learn it, and it's a very powerful EQ again uh, to process, uh, to master, to mix, to uh, identify problems, to audition, you know, to solo different parts, and again to learn. I use it a lot to learn to listen to other people's uh, mixes and just you know learn what they do to just to separate things and learn. Okay, so that's it. So hopefully you liked uh, all of this, all of this, and you're just like me, that you know, a guy that adores this plugging. Um, I'm pretty sure that no one will watch this video, but I just don't care. I'm just doing it anyways. So if you learned something and you liked it, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, maybe just to say thanks, you can go to the links at the description. You have a link for PayPal, you have the YouTube thanks, and you have Patreon. Maybe you can be a one-month Patreon and just, you know, get me a coffee that way. All right, so see you on the next one.